Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. up your hands and thank him. Thank him. Just one more time. Thank him. Thank him. Allah Bara, you are the mighty God. Ayla told me to you are the glorious God. Yes, you are. You are the mighty God. And you are told it you. Yes, you are. You are the glorious God. You are the mighty God. Yes, you are. And you are told it you. Yes, you are. You are the glorious God. You are the mighty God, and you are told me to. Everybody, can you say it? Alabara, mighty God. You are the mighty God, and you are told me to. You are the glorious God. You are the mighty God, and you are told me to. Yes, you are. the glorious God. Mighty You are the mighty God, and you are told me to. Yes, you are. You are the glorious God. Stand quickly, pick your Bible, Second Samuel chapter 9 from verse 1 through 8. And David said, is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? And there was of the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they had called unto him, David the king said unto him, are thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is he. Verse 3. And the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul that I may show the kindness of God unto him? And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan had yet a son which is lame on his feet. Verse 4. And the king said unto him, Where is he? And, he's, and Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he is in the house of Mishael, the son of Amiel, in Lod. And the kings 
David sent and fetched him out of the house of Misha, the son of Amiel from Lodibar. And Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come unto David. He fell on his face and reverence and reverence David, Mephibosheth, and 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 he answered, Behold thy servant. And verse 7. And David said unto him, Fear not. For I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan, thy father's sake. I will restore thee all the land of Saul, thy father. And thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. And he bowed himself. Let's read verse 8. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant that thou should look upon such a dead dog I am? May the Lord bless the reading of his word sit down on your enemy's head without apology i'm sure they are under pressure today they will not recover viewers you are on to a live service here in our international headquarters we want to thank you for being part of this service and we know god has a word for you my name is joshua Ikinla, and i thank you for being part of this live service hallelujah <laughs> come out of lodiba that is the topic i will be very brief as god will help me the literal meaning of lodiba lodiba is a town or was a town in, in the Old Testament in Gilead, not far from Mehanim, north of the Jacob River. So, Lodiba is an, a geographical area or location. But I'm going to give you a spiritual meaning or interpretation of Lodiba. Hallelujah. Have you ever felt cheated in your life. Okay. I want to do some few things here right now. Somebody shot fire. Do I have somebody who have 100,000 here and you just feel like you want to give me? Do I have somebody with that? Maybe 100 or 50,000. Come on. Bring it to me. Not a seed. You just you want to give me. Okay, 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 okay. This hundred thousand. Oh. Fifty, okay, fifty. Okay, let me remove it. May, let me let, let us just do some let's do some um, little illustration with my brother here. Maybe me and you are in business and um, you invested fifty thousand into my life. And um, uh, when you invest money like that, you hope to get profit, isn't it? Uh, am I communicating? Why are you looking? <laughs> For today, our brother is a businessman. And so, he's investing 50000 into a business. And now, it's time to get a return. I'm coming. He needs to get profit. Okay. For the purpose of this service, maybe now you have worked for one year and this investment you put in 50,000 and uh, at the end the investment, the profit that came. How much is this, sir? 200. 200. Ah. Okay. How many of you when you put in one million, you got two hundred. Let's say this is one million, or you put in one million, then rather than you you don't even see your, you didn't see your you didn't see your fifty thousand. What you saw was two hundred. Let me use the word. In other words, you feel short change. Okay, sir, sit down. I will hold your fifty thousand. 
is my own. No? Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm going somewhere. He gave me 50,000 naira. When I said, how many of you have 100,000 to give to me of 50,000? He was the first person that stood up. Because some of you don't want to give me any money here because you don't want to lose your money. But wait, I'm coming somewhere. If you, are, if you had rushed out, I would have been so happy. But he was the first person that stood up. I said, fine. So he gave me 50,000 naira. And in return, I gave him just 200 naira. Maybe, God forbid, this is his last money. And he's putting it into this business. And now this business is returning back to him just 200 naira out of not even the capital that he used to start the money, the business. And now I've asked him to go and sit down and I've told him I'm not going to give him this money. And I mean it, I won't give him. How many of you are feel? You feel as if somebody shortchanged you. You love people with all your heart. But by the time you invest into them, what they give you back is a garbage. My message is very short this morning. Uh, How many of you have put and burned the candle? You have PhD in your area of profession. But after all said and done, you don't even have a job that is commiserate to the input and the life you have spent burning the candle academically. How many of you have ever fallen in love with a man and you gave him everything? Your heart, your love, your body, your money, your resources, just at the time he's supposed to marry you, he dumped you. I've labored, labored, work hard with all your heart and trusted God for a breakthrough. But the period you were expecting a breakthrough, you had a breakdown. How many of you sponsored your child to the university you had four children you have done all your best so that they could become somebody in life and you are expecting to receive a return from them in order to take care of you but another woman has hijacked your daughter I mean hijacked your son that is your hope and now your son cannot see you you feel so changed you feel something is wrong you have invested but the reward that is coming out is shame that will bring me to the story of a man called Mephibosheth. The meaning of Mephibosheth simply means from the mouth of shame. From the mouth of the God of Bachtu. Bachtu means shame. And that was a God at that time that some of the heathen were worshipping and serving. Mephibosheth was the son of Jonathan and Jonathan was the son of Saul. So Mephibosheth was the grandson of Saul. Can I say this quickly that Saul was the king of Israel. A special man. A man with uncommon grace. Anointed by prophet Samuel. He came on board. And became a king. But can I say 
this. After laboring, his son, Jonathan, was supposed to become king. But something happened. The whole glory of Jonathan was taken by God to David. How many of you have seen what I mean? You are alive. What is supposed to come to you is going to somebody else. Oh, you don't get me. You are alive. What your father labored for is now becoming is now becoming something you are begging for. I'm not talking about favor. I'm talking about what is due for you. I'm not talking about I'm not talking about mercy. I'm talking about what you deserve. But somebody else is sitting on that position. I'm talking about what is supposed to come to you by right. Somebody else has should change it. I don't know how many, how many of you that is supposed to be on throne. Ladies and gentlemen, if Saul offend God, Jonathan didn't offend God. If Jonathan offend God, Mephibosheth didn't offend God. The problem I'm saying, I am here to address the mistake of your father that have become your mistake. The error of your father that have become your error. The foolishness of your grandfather that have become your foolishness. I mean, the battle of your grandfather that have become your battle. Am I talking to somebody here? Anyone under this auditorium that is suffering for the error of your grandfather, for the error of your great grandfather, today I deliver you. If the amen is louder, somebody is coming out. If the amen is louder, somebody is coming out. If the amen is louder, somebody is coming out. If the amen is louder, somebody is coming out. If the amen is louder, somebody is coming out. If the amen is louder, somebody is coming out. Sit down. By right, Jonathan was supposed to be on the throne. And if it's his right to be on the throne, why should God bypass a man like Jonathan that had the same heart like David? And take the reward of Jonathan and give to David. I am worried. And God said to me, there are some of you here, you are like Jonathan. <laughs> there are some of you here, you are like Jonathan. You are alive. And somebody has that does not deserve what you deserve. Is enjoying what you ought to have enjoyed. Am I talking to somebody here? Have you seen some people having a position and they cannot construct even a single ten sentence? But you are better, you are qualified, you are sound, you are diligent. But somebody else has taken your place. I'm, I'm, I'm here to prophesy. You might feel that I'm against David, but for today, I can be against David for this service. Any David that have sat on your position, today I remove them. You didn't hear me well. Any David, any David, any David, any blessing snatcher, any throne snatcher, any throne snatcher, today I prophesy. Am I talking to somebody? My name is Jonathan. I am not Saul. Why must I suffer for the sin of Saul? Why must I be punished for the sin of Saul? The throne belongs to me. We are sitting on my throne. We are sitting on my throne. I prophesy any David I in your throne I remove them if that amen can be louder somebody is taking over Bayata Baya Bayata Baya Bayata Baya Bayata Baya Bayata Baya I prophesy take your throne 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 Take your 
road I prophesy no more battle somebody shut fire shut fire sit down hey when I begin to study overnight do you know what God told me God told me I would have still made Jonathan a, a king and made David a king. But the problem was that Jonathan didn't have desire for the throne. There is no place Jonathan ever desired for the throne. God would have allowed Jonathan to rule for 30 years and bring David later on to take over. But because there was no desire, because your heart desire will I grant. Ladies and gentlemen, to be ambitionless is catastrophe. To be ambitionless, it is a catastrophe. To be visionless is destruction in awaiting. Am I talking to somebody here? Anyone that is a governor of your state does not have tenure. Anyone that is the president of your country does not have tenure. If you can desire it, you can acquire it. If you can see it, you can become it. If you can see it, you can become it. I prophesy to some king here. Occupy your throne. Eh? Occupy your throne. Occupy your throne. Anyone like Jonathan here that have decided to be a failure today, I remove you from a failure. The louder the amen, the quicker a miracle. Shut fire! Shut fire! Yeah, 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 yeah. I prophesy. Some Jonathan are taking over their throne. Some Jonathan are taking over their throne. Somebody shut fire. Sit down, let me talk a little bit. The foolishness of Jonathan. I will tell you now. He knew that the father was out of the will of God. But look at what he did. He followed his father in the battle that he knew that the father was going to lose. Can I say this? Don't allow family tie to destroy your tie with God. Don't allow family tie to destroy covenant tie. That somebody is your family member and is doing something that is wrong does not mean you should stand by him. Standing by him means you will die the way Saul and Jonathan died the same day. Jonathan was not made to die the way he died but because he was supporting the wrong of his father he died like a chicken ladies and gentlemen the army that killed Jonathan were the army of his friend David can I say this we can be the same member I can be your prophet and you are my member. But if you decide to go to the opposition part, my sword can crush you. You didn't hear me well. You didn't hear me well. You can be my member, my leader, my, my, my beloved. And I can love you so much with all my heart. But when it comes to battle engagement, if you oppose me in the battlefield, I slay your head. Am I talking? Even though I forgive you, the angels around me can forgive you. Oh, you don't get me. You don't get what I'm saying. I know some people who are military understand this. When it comes to battlefield, it doesn't matter if somebody points a weapon to you, it's called self-defense. And you must be faster. If you are not faster, you die before your time. Be careful. Be careful. Don't be around David. And be supporting David. And be supporting Saul. He was supporting David. That was the foolishness of Jonathan. 
he was supporting David and he was going back to support his father because hear this I have told you this blood is thicker than water but love is thicker than blood blood is thicker than water but love is thicker than blood so in arranging it actually blood relative is thicker than water which is relationship but when it comes to love when it comes to love nothing like family come when you are love related you are covenant related some of you will die if you are not very cheerful god forbid if you are not cheerful with the way you are so emotional when it comes to the battle of destiny it is detrimental to be sentimental in the battle of destiny be very careful that somebody is your blood if it's not if it's not following the course and not standing by the revelation i believe that you have in the name is your family member you are following him to a native doctor in order to please him you can be slain if you are an enemy here please when it's time for this kopoko service just step aside because anything can happen to you god begin to speak to me say the reason why i choose not to give jonathan the throne well, because Jonathan was a friend of David and an enemy of the anointed. He was rapporting with David and rapporting with his father. And God said, the fact that you and David are covenant friend. Anyone that is against David, I am against him. I know you are friends, but I'm against you, Jonathan, because you didn't leave your father. This is why some of you that play a monkey game, you are here, you are there. I don't want to have indecision is decision. That you are, you don't want to be on one side. You want, you want everybody to love. Everybody can love you. When Moses came out, he said, "Who is on the Lord's side? Let me see you. If you know you're on the Lord's side, come this side." Some of you, you are here. You are here you are here you are here you don't know how to take a stand that is why you are having battles in life here it is sit down let me go up david was busy enjoying his life do you know something jonathan and Saul died the same day. How can a father and his son be slain at the same time? When they died, it wept. The nurse that was to take care of the only son of Jonathan, Mephibosheth, Mephibosheth was not born lame. He was five years old at that time. The nurse picked Mephibosheth and started running with Mephibosheth because a new government has come in town. A new sheriff is in town. If I don't protect this child, maybe David will slay Mephibosheth. So, why they were running on their way? Oh God. May I not have evilness? When she was about to fall, she used the child to support herself. The child became a sacrifice for her body. And the Bible said, as she fell, she fell on the child and compressed the leg of the child. And the bones and everything broke. And her legs were not broken. I thought nurse were to care for children and care for you. But this nurse didn't care because she was in a battlefield. She used the child to support herself. Who is around me? Trying to use me to score a point. Who is around me? Trying to use me as a shield to defend bullet. You don't get me. 
there are some of you you are fighting a battle that you know nothing about whenever somebody commits a crime they bring you at the front and present you as the one that committed the crime and they hide behind you you chase the bullets that you are not supposed to chase some of you are receiving attack from a witch cover for nothing that you did some of you are on our attack in your office for an offense that you did not commit some of you you are being hated because somebody is using you to cover up Thirteen billion or fifteen billion naira that is found. We are still looking for the owner. Heads are.